Mercedes-Benz is accepting the inevitable all-electric future, and to its credit, it's doing so faster than most of its other name-brand competitors. The car next to me is the one that really kicks off the EV party. This is the EQS. Now, by now you might be familiar with this car, but this is our first opportunity to drive it and film it on U.S. soil. So stick around for our full review and we'll tell you everything you need to know. Before we get too far along, I'd like to remind you to please subscribe to the Motor One YouTube channel and help us grow. You can also follow us on social media using the handle at MotorOne.com. The more time I spend around this car, the more times I ask, do I like the way it looks or do I not? You know what, depending on who you ask, I think it's gonna be a bit of a mixed bag. But let's take a step back and remember what the EQS is supposed to be. It's supposed to be an S-Class equivalent, just you swap out the motor for batteries. So if that's really the case, Think of an S-Class. When that car shows up, it's imposing, it's regal, it's in your face. When this rolls up, it's not really the same effect. I was driving earlier today and I saw the reflection of this in a window and it just didn't really do it for me. Uh, I got to drive a Porsche Taycan last week. I can't tell you how many looks the Taycan got. People snapping necks left and right. All that's to say an electric car can still be aerodynamic and efficient, but look good too. The one thing I can't take away from the EQS's design is it sure is aerodynamic uh, and a lot of that credit is how they shaped it, especially at the front. EQS included all of the Mercedes electric cars, the EQs that they're calling them, they all wear a pretty similar corporate face. So that means somewhat angular headlights running into a big flat grill piece uh, and then down, down below there actually is a functional front air dam which looks nice. What I like about this is they had a little bit of fun with it. Depending on how you spec the car, they're designed in different uh, trims. In this case, it's a little three-pointed star. There's a bunch of them that go around the big star. Not a frunk in this car. In fact, the giant cutout on the side is a place to fill the washer fluid, which is strange how they package it in such a big spot on the side of the car. So no frunk in the EQS. Where it does gain some points right back is the wheel design. These ones in particular, they're sort of the aero wheels. We're getting used to seeing these EVs now that have uh, sort of large pieces just like this for a more aerodynamic looking wheel. But what I like is that there are plenty of different wheel options on the EQS. So if you get the 450, the 580, you can spec it a bunch of different ways and all the wheel designs look different from each other, which is kind of unique. The side profile of the car is where the EQS is defined. This is again where some are gonna hate it, some are gonna love it. It's super duper curved. The entire shape is just right here and this is where it really takes a big departure from the S-Class. What I do like, speaking of S-Class, is that it has the same door handle. So when you unlock the car, they pop out and then when you go to lock it, you just press the button right there and they fold neatly back into the bodywork. So here at the back of the EQS, the standout feature is the massive light bar, which stretches across the entire width of the vehicle. Much like the face, this light bar is gonna be signature to all of the EQ electric Mercedes. That might be the easiest way to tell them apart. Other than the badge right here, this car is a 450 plus. The plus signifies that this is the longer range version as opposed to the 580. We'll get into the specifics on the range and the powertrains in just a bit. The other thing to notice with the EQS that sets it apart from the S-Class, this is obviously a liftback car. And it, it doesn't have a frunk, but I'll say they have more than made up for it uh, with the amount of cargo space back here. There's more than you ever know what to do with, which is awesome uh, in a sedan this big. It makes a lot of sense to have that much space. The last thing to point out is the charge port. It's here at the rear three quarter of the car. I've heard different schools of thought on this. I think some EV owners prefer to have it at the front. If they feel like they're gonna be pulling the car in face first uh, at an Electrify America station. Then I've heard others say that they prefer to back it in. If you're an EV owner, do you have a preference on this? Let us know in the comments, we'd like to find out. Hopping in to the EQS as a rear seat passenger for the first time, the immediate thing you notice is you are not hurting for space at all. So this is the fun part of the video where I admit that I'm only five foot eight, and yes, I'm sitting behind my own driving position right now, but even those that are six foot or taller, you're not gonna be hurting for room uh, in any capacity. The EQS is the same wheelbase as the S-Class just about. They're both at 126 inches, and a lot of that goes to the rear seat. The only part where you might be getting into trouble is with headroom because the roof starts sloping pretty dramatically at this point in the car. 
Those that are taller might miss out a bit here. And the seating position is pretty upright, though you do get these nice pillowy headrests to keep you comfortable. I do like the two-part panoramic sunroof. That keeps the cabin a little bit more airy, especially in the rear. For all those people that didn't give you a second look as you drove past them, they would absolutely change their mind if you could just show them the interior of this car. Obviously, the first thing you see and the first thing that takes your attention is the hyperscreen. 56 inches, one single piece of glass. Credit to Mercedes-Benz, I've never seen anything like this in a car. And as they're getting into the EV space where things are constantly trying to one-up each other, I love that they came in and did something super original that looks this damn cool. Center display is 17 inches. You get a 12 inch display in front of the driver and then even the passenger gets an additional 12 inch display so they can do things like adjust the media, set navigation, things like that. When it doesn't sense that a passenger is in here, the display is just stagnant as it is right now. Apart from hyperscreen, just for a second, everything else in here is just as nice as you would expect it to be. This color uh, leather right here is gorgeous. It's like just between brown and gray. I've really never seen it in a car before. And the pinstriping on the wood looks fantastic as well. Mercedes-Benz wrote the book on ambient lighting and they up one up themselves just a bit in the EQS. The lighting goes all the way around the main display here. They've even managed to pipe it into the seats. At night, it looks incredible. Back to hyperscreen just for a second because I want to focus in on MBUX. There are two different main displays with this version of MBUX. If you hold down the home button, you can go between the classic layout and then something they're calling zero layer. When you're on zero layer, the default view you get is the map. Wireless Apple CarPlay. I love that that's included in MBUX now. It's been seamless. It hooked up the very first time and it works very well. You can easily go back and forth. Last thing to mention on hyperscreen, it is a fingerprint monster. So make sure you have your cloth ready to go. You're gonna wanna wipe it down. So apologies for the impromptu outfit change, but uh, the way the schedule was with this video shoot, we had to do it over the course of two days. Uh, and sometimes wearing the same outfit two days in a row is kind of gross. But just as I changed my shirt, I also changed the car. Uh, yesterday we were in the EQS 450, and that was a car we used to poke around the interior and show you the exterior design details. Today I'm behind the wheel of the EQS 580. That's a perfect segue for me to tell you what the differences are between those two. I should also mention that there will be an AMG EQS not too far down the line. But when this car launches this fall in the US, it will be two flavors. EQS 450, EQS 580. They use the same exact battery pack and the range, which we'll talk about in just a sec, is also very similar. The biggest difference between the two is horsepower. EQS 450 and its single motor is gonna be 329 horsepower, as the 580 and its dual motor setup, which we have right now, is 516 horsepower. The 580 is the only version that offers all-wheel drive. Is that convoluted? Hopefully not. Two trim levels, all-wheel drive, and two motors on 580, single motor rear-wheel drive on EQS 450. The other numbers we should crunch are the charging figures. So the EQS is capable of 200 kilowatt fast charging. And what they say is that the car will do 10% to 80% in 31 minutes. And the funny thing is you do get two years of free charging uh, with the EQS when you buy one, it's included in the price, but that's a 30 minute time slot. So basically you can juice up the whole car roughly 30 minutes, depending on what's going on. And looking at potential range, we actually just got the EPA figures this week. The EQS 450 is going to be good for 350 miles of range and the EQS 580, which we have right now, is 340 miles of range. So only a 10 mile discrepancy between the two cars. Really it's just a matter of horsepower and all wheel drive if you want to upgrade from one to the other. I don't want to dwell on that range figure too much. Of course we're going to bring in Tesla and Lucid just knocked out 500 miles the other week. So yeah, the, the, car, the cars that the EQS competes against can go a bit further. That said, once you're in the mid 300s, the, the idea of range anxiety kind of goes away anyway, you know? Could they have done a little bit better? Yeah, I think so, depending on the circumstances and how you view it. But at the same time, there really isn't a world where 350 miles to a charge isn't going to be okay, at least for the absolute majority of people. Let's set aside the technical stuff for a second and now finally focus on what it's like to drive the EQS. 
And we're evaluating it not just as a new EV to the market, but also as a Mercedes-Benz. And this car has the kind of rough job of having to be good at both. Mercedes thinks that not only will they court some new customers with this as an EV, but they also think that some traditional S-Class customers will make the jump from that to this. Which means, in some respects, this has to drive a lot like an S-Class. I can tell you right off the bat here that it does. <laughs> it's really big and floaty and calm, and it mimics a lot of the same character as the S-Class, which is great. That's probably the best thing about the EQS driving experience. The flip side of that is the size of this thing. It's a 5,900 pound vehicle. That's big even by EV standards, and it drives like it. So I'm not gonna spend too much time here talking about blasting through a canyon with this car because it's, it's not what you want to do with it. Uh, to quote a colleague of mine from this morning, he said, it doesn't give you tunnel vision when you accelerate. If I punch it right now on the highway, it's quick. 516 horsepower is just fine, but you don't get the same sense of bewilderment that you get driving a Porsche Taycan uh, or a Tesla Model S. At the same time, this thing is screwed together a lot better than any Tesla product I've ever been in. That shouldn't be a shock though. So that brings me to the last question here, which is why would you buy a Mercedes EQS over a Tesla or a Lucid? or a Porsche or an Audi or you know, fill in the blank with the luxury EV of your choice because this segment is expanding like crazy. For now, the way the market is, this is the most luxurious electric vehicle on sale. That said, as we're getting closer to EVs from Bentley, Rolls Royce, Jaguar Land Rover, and plenty of others, this thing is gonna have its work cut out for it. The Mercedes-Benz EQS goes on sale this fall in the United States. EQS 450 starts at $102,000. The EQS 580 4Matic starts at $119,000. For all the information on this car, you can head to the link in the description. And as always, thanks for watching.